this is part two to growing up in God. I don't know what happened. I think just, I don't know, there was a glitch in the, the video just cut off in the middle of me talking. And so, so as I was saying to my new believers in part two of this video, um, you are going to have the opportunity to grow up. You're going to be able to learn how to stand up in Christ. You're going to learn how to walk in Christ. You're going to learn how to talk in Christ. And it's all in the word of God. And so if you go with me to Psalm 1, this tells you how to do that. And we're going to the Old Testament, to the book of Psalm, to the very first Psalm. And I'll give you time to, to catch up on that. All right, we are here. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. And let me just stop and pause right there because it's once again, I am reading from the King James Version. And that is why I love the King James Version because um, when you break down the translation, the, the language is so rich with meaning. And so, whereas in other translations, it may say, blessed is the man that walk, that or does not walk, or however it may say it, the King James Version says, walketh. And I believe I shared on the very first video, um, whenever you see E-T-H at the end of a word, it means continuously, continuously. And so, what this first part of Psalm 1 verse 1 is saying, blessed is the man that walketh, that continuously walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So those who don't constantly walk or abide by the counsel of ungodly people, ungodly people do not have God's interest at heart. And so as a new believer in Jesus Christ, those are not the people that you go to to get counsel when you are going through a trial or situation in your life that is affecting your very life or that is impacting your faith walk. You do not go to the ungodly for advice or for counsel in, in those regards. It says don't walk continuously in the counsel of the ungodly, listening to their advice, listening to the ways that they solve their problems, listening to how they resolve their issues. That is not what we do as someone who loves the Lord and someone who is living our life pleasing to him. So it says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Once again, standeth, E-T-H, continually being at, just hanging out, just to be hanging out in the place of sinners. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't have um, relationships or friends with friends who are sinners, because how will they know Christ if everybody just scatters away from them, right? So it's saying constantly standing in the way of sinners, being amongst them all the time, where this is where you spend all of your time. This is who you communicate with all the time. Pretty soon, and the word of God says this in another scripture, evil company corrupts good manners. A sinner is someone who walks in disobedience to God's will and way. That is what a sinner is. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we were all once sinners. We were all walking in disobedience to the will of the Lord. So as a new believer and as believers in Jesus Christ, we don't want to find ourselves always hanging out in the presence of sinners, congregating with them so much so that it's impacting our lifestyle. It is impacting our witness for Christ. It is affecting our obedience to our father and so this is what is what it what it means nor standeth in the way of sinners you don't spend all your time in the places and in the hangouts where people who are disobedient to the will of god are it says nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful those negative bitter people that complain about everything and that are so negative about life 
You don't sit continuously in their presence. Why? Because when you sit in the presence of a bitter person, you're gonna that's going to affect your hearing that's going to affect your your position your disposition you may be of a joyful spirit remember the fruit of the spirit one of the fruit of the spirit is joy you may have a joyful disposition about you but if you sit constantly in the in the in the seat of a scornful person it's going to affect your joyfulness you're going to become bitter you're going to become negative in your thinking, in your actions, on how you perceive people, on how you perceive the world. And so this is what the psalmist is saying. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So let's go back to verse 1. It says, blessed is the man. So you are blessed if you don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, if you don't stand in the way of sinners, and if you don't sit in the seat of the scornful, you will live a blessed life. Because though the negative impact of those lifestyles, the disobedient lifestyles will not impact your life and your walk with Christ. But then verse two says, but his delight, meaning those who don't do this, the blessed, our delight is in the law of the Lord, meaning the word of God. Our delight, we get our delight in the word of God and in the law doth he meditate day and night. It is the word of God that we keep at the forefront of our minds and our hearts as we go throughout our day. We think about the goodness of God. We think about the peace of God. We think about the love of God. Those are the things that we meditate on or that we think about. Right now in our world, we're on the, on a whole health and wellness um, focus because of what COVID revealed and the impact of COVID on our lives, where so many people were under so much stress and depression and anxiety that we have apps now and YouTube channels and other podcasts and all of these other platforms where people can just sit and meditate and hear positive things or good things or soft music or whatever. Well, for the believers in Jesus Christ, we meditate on the word of God. We meditate on him day and night. We don't just sit quiet and let our minds just roam and think about the first one thing and then the other. And we have to be careful about the things that we do meditate on. We want to think about and meditate on things that's going to cause us to grow from the inside out, cause us to be strengthened in our faith from the inside out. And the best thing and the only thing for us to do that is the word of God. And so here in Psalm 1 is telling us what we need to do in order to meditate, in order to grow, in order to be blessed in our walk. And then verse 3 says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth continuously <laughs> shall prosper. And so this is the life that is reflective of a person who obeys the Lord, who meditates on the word of God, who practices the word of God in the way that he lives his life. The word is saying that you'll be like a tree. Think about a tree that's planted by rivers of water. It's constantly being fed. It's constantly being nourished. And when something is constantly being fed and constantly being nourished, it's going to grow. It's going to eventually bring forth fruit. And the fruit that it brings forth is going to be good fruit. It's going to remain and it's going to bring forth that fruit in the season. So it's not going to just bring forth fruit that is not ready, that is not developed, but it's going to bring forth fruit in the season of its life that it should bring that fruit forth. The, his leaf will not wither because you're being constantly fed, because you're being constantly nourished by the word of God. You're going to be effective. Your life is going to be effective you're not going to wither away. People who start out living saved, they accept Jesus Christ into their lives. They're excited. They go to church. 
They might sing in the choir. They might do all these other things. But pretty soon, without having that constant flow of word in their minds, in their hearts, without them taking out time to sit and read and to study and to get that constant nourishment, that constant feeding, they're going to wither away. They're going to wither away. And it's not that Jesus didn't work. It's not that the word of God didn't work. It's that they did not work it. You got to work it in order for it to work in you. Amen. You can tweet that for me. <laughs> All right. And so it says, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Whatsoever he doeth continuously. As long as you keep the word of God forefront, and that is your focus, and that is your intentionality, you're going to prosper in your life. That's not to say that you're going to come up against adversity and that you're going to come up against tests and trials. That is a part of life. Job says that a, a man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Those few days are full of trouble. We're going to have trouble. We're going to have setbacks in our lives. But because you have nourished yourself in the word of God, you're going to have what you need. That's that grace stepping in. That's that grace. That's that divine influence of the Holy Ghost stepping in, bringing you that joy, that peace, even in the midst of long suffering. That's that Holy Spirit bringing in that meekness and that gentleness to, to sustain you during those adverse times in your life. And woo, I can tell you about that. <laughs> I have some testimonies that will just literally blow your mind about things that God has sustained me through things that has happened to me, things that have come upon me or that I have had to encounter in my life, you know, that God has literally shown himself so strong for me in my life. Just amazing. And so I'm here as a witness to let you know that everything that I'm sharing with you from the word of God is real. It has, I have experienced it. So I'm not sitting up here telling you something just out of, you know, out of left field and just want to, you know, do something. But no, I'm telling you this because I know that he is real. I know that it works because it has worked in my life. Amen. 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 Let's get back to the song. <laughs> the fourth verse says, the ungodly are not so. So whatever we just read in verses one, two, and three for the blessed person and how the blessed person, the believer lives their life. Well, verse four is telling us that the ungodly are not so. And remember the ungodly are those who are not obedient to God, who are living outside of God's will. They are not so. They don't experience blessings like that. They, their delight is not in the law of the Lord. They are not going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. Their leaf will wither. Whatsoever they do won't prosper. And that's not to say that if somebody is ungodly or not saved that they won't have success in their life. But it's to the end of that. You can have all the money in the world. You can have the best cars, the best homes and all of that and still be miserable in your life. That's why we focus on this channel. We focus living your life from the inside out because all of that outward stuff is great to have. And I'm not against that because one of these days I'm going to have it too. <laughs> but your inside has to be in order. Wealth is really money that is attached to your purpose. Riches, they come and go. But when you are wealthy, that wealth is attached to your purpose. And when you're able to steward that wealth for the glory of God, you will never be without his presence or his abundance in your life. You never will be. And so it's saying here in verse four, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind driveth away. And this is referring to um, in the Old Testament when they uh, went to the threshing floor and they were uh, beating out wheat, the chaff was, you shake it and, and, and the wind would blow it away. It was something that was worth, worthless, was useless. You only wanted the wheat. 
so that you can use it to make bread and to to make food from. But the chaff was just something that that was unnecessary and it, it had no value uh, for the individual. So it's just saying that the ungodly are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. It's something that's not going to that's that's purposeless. That's not going to even stand. It says, therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. When it says that they shall not stand in the judgment, they're not going to be able to bear up under God's judgment. They're not going to be able to um, save themselves. They're not going to have what they need when it's judgment time comes because they did not accept God. They did not accept the 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 life that he had for them so they're not going to stand in judgment and sinners cannot stand in the congregation of the righteous how many times have you experienced it where you have a group of believers together and you're talking you're congregating and somebody who is not of the faith they may walk up and they may be in a conversation and after a while you see them kind of like just walk away you know, or in church when the word is going forth, you may see people get up and leave out. Um, that's not always the case, but in some cases, sinners cannot stand in the congregation of the righteous. They won't be able to, to endure being in the congregation of righteous people. It's, it's convicting for them. And unless they are drawn with a heart to come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they're not going to be able to maintain that stance. They're not going to be able to stay in your presence. So don't get offended if you have friends who now that you have accepted Jesus Christ and your life has changed and you have begin, begun to grow in him and grow in your faith and you no longer do the things that you used to do. You've replaced them with other things that are more wholesome, that are a true return on the investment in your life. Uh, you no longer uh, engage in um, ungodly activities anymore, you're going to lose some friends. They're not going to be able to stand in your presence because the life that you now live is so in contradiction to what they believe and what how they live. They're not going to be able to maintain that relationship. And it's okay. Stay uh, on the course of your faith. Because your example and your walk with the Lord may draw them to him. And don't get upset if everybody who you share your testimony with don't want to hear it right now. It's okay. It's okay. One day, one day they will listen. One day the light bulb will come on. But you maintain your stance in the Lord and be that at light for them. Be that example for them. Because right now you you throwing their little world off because they know how you used to be. They know what you used to do. They know, know how you used to talk, right? And now you're not doing that anything. They trying to figure this out. Like what happened? They don't understand it. But just continue to stay, stand fast in your faith and continue to walk out what you're, how you're living because that is a testimony. Remember, let them investigate your life. Let them investigate Jesus in you. Let them keep asking questions and keep picking until they, just like Lee Strobel and Jay Warner Wallace and me and so many others, kept investigating and asking questions until Jesus became real to us. So don't let that stop you. But then in verse uh, 6, the last verse in this psalm says, For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. He constantly knows our way. He has set our way before, before us. He knows the way of the righteous. It says, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So those who remain ungodly, those who continue to walk in disobedience to the will of God, eventually they're going to perish. And that's so unfortunate because God is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. So we have to remain vigilant as believers in Jesus Christ and let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and eventually glorify our Father which is in heaven. That is the word of God and it will manifest. 
if we continue to be obedient to how he has governed our lives. And so at this stage in your life, new believers, you've accepted him. Now, you know, as a newborn babe, you know that you're going to testify. You're going to share your experience. And this is coming from the previous video. You're going to stay in the word of God. You're going to desire the sincere milk of the word because babies grow by what they eat. And so the more you eat, the more you feed yourself on the word of God, the stronger you'll grow. And then you'll be able to uh, do more things spiritually. You'll be able to have more newer experiences spiritually as your faith begins to develop in the Lord. And as you grow, know that you're growing in grace. The work of the Holy Spirit is working on your heart. There may be some times you come up against something and you just, oh my God, you want to let somebody have it. But then you feel the Holy Spirit saying, no, no, pray for them, let it go, walk away. That is the Holy Spirit. That is the grace. That is growing in grace. You're just not going to wow out anymore on somebody that come at you the wrong way. You're going to grow in grace by showing them grace. And not only are you going to grow in grace, it's going to, that's that divine influence reflecting in your lifestyle, but you're going to grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by investigating the word of God, by reading about him, by doing what the word of God says, by meditating on it day and night. You know, a lot of times we, we feel like it's so hard to live saved. No, it's not. When you think about the life that you used to live and the things that you used to do, for example, these videos, like I said, I was trying to keep them down to 30 to 45 minutes. And then the Holy Spirit just impressed upon me. People sit in movie theaters or in front of Netflix or in front of the television and they'll watch one, two, three hours of television or a movie in one sitting. And when they get up, nothing about their life has been improved. <laughs> But when you sit in the presence of God, any time that you sit in his presence, that you pray, that you read the word, that you fast, and we're going to talk about that in another video. But any time that you engage with the Lord, you're growing in grace. You're meditating on him. You know, prior to Jesus Christ, your mind was probably filled with some other guy or some other girl or some other thing that you were interested in that took up all your time, that wasted all your money, messed up your life, took away your peace. But those are those people and those things are the things that you thought about all the time. All you're doing is replacing all of that stuff with the word of God and with Jesus. That's all you're doing. You're replacing all of that old stuff with what he has for you right now. It's not hard at all. We make it hard. And you know why? It's hard when we try to do it in and of ourselves. We cannot live this life in and of ourselves. The word of God tells us in our flesh dwelleth no good thing. There is nothing good in our flesh, in this body of ours. Right? In, an, in our nature. That's what it's referring to. In our nature. There is nothing good. What is good is when we invite the life of Christ in us and I invite the Holy Spirit to live out this life through us. It's him living the life through us. We're the vessel. We're the body. He's the spirit. He's living through us, showing the world him through our life. It's that simple. You know, when you grow up in um, environments where there's a lot of violence um, a lot of shame, a lot of guilt. People are so inundated in those environments that their life reflects that. Their life reflects the violence. Their life reflects the shame. Their life reflects the guilt. That is why in St. John three seventeen, the word of God says that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. We're already condemned just by the, our nature, right? So as believers, we don't condemn people that are living lives that just are a reflection of things that are ungodly or unholy or that are detrimental to their very lives. But just as their life is reflecting that environment, 
on the spiritual side, our lives are supposed to reflect the newness of the life that is in us. And that comes, like I said before, by grace, through grace. We grow in grace. And the same grace, the same love that we were given by the Father, because he could have cut us off. <laughs> he could have cut us off, but he did not. His love extended to reach us. And he even tells us to love as he has loved us. And so people may think that's hard. That's going to be in the next lesson. But it's not. When you think about the things that we have done um, to offend God, the things that we have done to other people, the, even some of the things that we've done to ourselves and God has forgiven us of all of those things and have restored us to a right relationship with him. Who are we to push others aside? Who are we to hold on to unforgiveness? Who are we to not love people? No, we have to reflect the life that Christ is living in us. So with that same love, we have to love. With that same patience, we have to be patient. And all of that is done by grace. So we grow into that. Babies don't know how to feed themselves. They make a mess as they're putting that food into their mouths. You know, and as you're eating and you're learning the word of God, you're going to make a mess. You don't know how to always digest what you're reading. You know, it may come out wrong. You may offend somebody. You know, but it's coming from a good place in your heart. And when those things happen, repent. You know, and if you offend someone by something that you say or do, just ask for forgiveness and continue to show them love. You're not doing it to be mean. You're not doing it to be spiteful, but you're growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that is why new believers and other believers that are watching this, that is why we need one another. That is why we cannot be against one another. Jesus says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples when you have love one to another. We have to encourage one another. None of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. We're all going to make mistakes. But at the core of who we are in Christ is the love of God. And everything that we do and everything that we say has to come from that foundation of love or else it will not profit us anything. If you come in at somebody with the word of God and you come in from an attitude of I just you just need to get right. You know, you come in with the wrong spirit, with the wrong mindset. That's not that's not love and it's not going to be impactful in a positive way. Remember, whatever we do, we do it by love. And like I said, that's going to be in the next lesson. <laughs> but we're talking about growing up in God, learning how to stand, learning how to walk and learn how to talk. So this is your assignment. This is something for you to work on uh, based upon what we talked about today. I want you to Google scriptures that talk about standing. I want you to Google scriptures that talk about walking and scriptures that talk about talking or speaking um, as, a, as a Christians, as believers. So you're going to go and you're going to put in scriptures on standing, on how to stand. And you're going to get some scriptures that pop up. We'll begin to read or grab you a few of those that really um, stand out to you or that speak to your heart. And just think about those scriptures, write them down, post them up on, on your wall or wherever, um, post them up and begin to meditate on those scriptures, on how to stand, how to walk, how to talk. I'm going to give you all three to start with just because I'm a nice teacher <laughs> and I want to give you an example of what to look for when you're looking for those scriptures. So let's go to Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 and this is a scripture that's referring to standing. Okay, Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. It says, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free 
and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I want to read that in a, a different translation just so so this is the English standard version I on my trusty iPhone here on my Bible app which I if you have not downloaded the Bible app please download the Bible app that is a great resource especially for new believers but for anybody who has a relationship with the Lord the Bible app has just tons of information daily devotionals and everything that will help build your faith and encourage your walk with the Lord but the English standard version of Galatians 5 and 1 says for freedom Christ has set us free stand firm therefore and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery sin is a bondage sin is slavery you all it is it has a chokehold and it causes it pulls you down people I mean it pulls you down and it's a struggle to get out on your own you can't do it you know that's why we cannot condemn people that are struggling with 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 issues in their life and so many times we categorize sins we put the murderers and the the racists and the you know uh, the prostitutes and the drug dealers. We like to categorize sin, but in the eyes of God, all sin is sin. The murderer is just as bad as the gossiper. The fornicator, which is the person that has sex without outside of marriage. They're just as bad as the person who is fearful, who operates in a spirit of fear. Believe it or not, in the book of Revelation, it tells us the first people that are named that are going to go to hell are the fearful. And then it's the unbelieving. So we need to stop categorizing sins and making it seem like this is so bad and this is okay. Sin in the eyes of God is sin. And he says all sin stinks in his nostrils. So sin is, is, is something that will keep you bound and in bondage. And because God has made us free from that, we don't want to go back to that. So Galatians 5 and 1 is telling us stand fast. In other words, stand firm. That is why... Uh, in Galatians 5 1 in the English Standard, it says, For freedom Christ has set us free. For freedom, for to be free, He set us free so that we can be free. So stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of bondage. And in the King James Version, it says, Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. When I think about entangled, I think about being caught up in a rope. You can't get out, you can't untie yourself. Right. And that is what sin did for us. But this is a scripture that talks about standing. So stand fast, stand firm in the liberty, in the freedom that Christ has set you free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, let's flip on over to Colossians. So you have Galatians, you have Ephesians, you have Philippians, and then it's Colossians. So we're going to go to Colossians, the fourth chapter. And the fifth verse, and this tells us one of the ways which we can walk as believers. And it says, walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. That is a good scripture. That I mean, all the scriptures are good. <laughs> all the scripture, the word of God is just good all the time. And all the time it's good and he's good. But this is good based upon what I was just talking about, how we treat unbelievers and how uh, we are to engage with those who have not accepted Jesus Christ. Now, in the, in the English Standard Version, that same scripture, Colossians 4 and 5, says, Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. So we want to make sure that the time that we spend, even in the presence of those who are not of the faith, who are not living this life, who have not accepted 
Christ into their lives. We want to make sure that we're walking in wisdom. Now, the word of God tells us that the wisdom from above is first pure, peaceable, and easy to be entreated. And so the wisdom from God is not like the wisdom of man. The wisdom of God is pure. It comes straight from his heart, straight from the word. And it's peaceable. It's not argumentative. It, it doesn't put people down. But He, Holy Spirit, this is why we grow in grace. Once again, Holy Spirit will lead you. He will guide you. He will instruct you on just what to say and how to say it. So that any time that you spend is, is the, the best of that time is made in encouraging someone and in living a life that is pleasing to God. So that was an example of a scripture that tells us how to walk. Here's a scripture in Colossians chapter four, again, verse six, the very next scripture that talks about talking. It says, let your speech be always with grace, <laughs> seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Let's look at, I'm going to the Amplified Version, and I'm going to read that from the Amplified Version, Colossians 4, chapter 6, I mean, chapter 4, verse 6, and the Amplified Version says, let your speech at all times be gracious and pleasant, seasoned with salt, so that you will know how to answer each one who questions you. Now, when it says season with salt, that does not mean table salt. That does not mean that you're sprinkling salt on people when you talk to them. That comes from a Greek word, halas, which means prudence, which is wisdom. So this is referencing wisdom. When the, when the word of God, and we are preservers, so the word of God tells us that for us to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So we are preservers and we operate in the wisdom of God. So when it tells us to let our speech be with grace and that our speech be seasoned with salt, that means the flavor of our language is spoken in wisdom. That what we say and how we say it is spoken with wisdom. Are we going to make mistakes? Yes. That is why we grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But for the most part, when we speak, when we talk, there is a way that people of God, believers in Christ, are to govern our speech. So I want, that's your homework. I want you to Google scriptures about standing or with the word stand in it, scriptures on walking or how to walk in God and scriptures on speech or how to talk. And I want you to uh, find you a couple of those scriptures for each one and to do like Psalm 1 says, meditate, think about those scriptures. And that it become a part of your everyday life so that you're literally growing in grace and living out what the word of God says. And once again, we're going to make mistakes. Don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up. I gave you 1 John chapter 1 verse 9, which is if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But then I want to give you Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Make sure you write that down. This is a very key scripture in the life of a new believer because uh, we have an enemy and his name is Satan. And one of the things he likes to do is to remind us of how we used to be. And the word of God tells us that he is an accuser of the brother. Actually, his name Satan means accuser. And what he does is accuses us before God all the time. But because we are covered under the blood of Jesus, 
that doesn't work anymore. And so Romans 8, 1 says, and this is from the Amplified Bible, therefore, there is now no condemnation, no guilty verdict, no punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus, who believe in him as personal Lord and Savior. So once you have accepted Christ, he is not condemning you. There is no more condemnation. You have no reason to feel guilty about anything that you did in the past, anything that you said in the past. God has wiped your life clean and you have a brand new slate. And as you're growing in grace, as long as you stay before him, he's got you. He's got you. Let's go to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Same book, but different chapter and different verses. So this is teaching us about Christian conduct. And so it says, this is again from the Amplified Version of the Bible. It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God to present your bodies dedicating all of yourselves set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, your logical, your intelligent act of worship. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Now the Amplified Bible is also a word-for-word -word translation of the original Greek text, and it's called Amplify because it amplifies the language, meaning it breaks it down even further. So you have definitions and understandings of the scriptures right in the scripture. But I'm going to read the same verse, the same two verses, Romans 12, 1 and 2, from the King James Version. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In other words, that's the least that we can do, right? It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So these are scriptures just to help you, to guide you along the way as you are building your relationship with the Father, as you are growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, my apologies on the interruption of this lesson. I think I actually extended this lesson longer because I had to do a part two because the first video cut off, but that's okay. <laughs> Teachers like to teach. So I hope that you... Uh, have received um, the word of God that will build you up and that will encourage your heart. And guess what? You just leveled up your life. Congratulations. You're at a whole new level now that you have gained new knowledge about walking and in the faith and growing up in God. I just want to say a quick prayer over you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I ask that everyone that is listening to this teaching and that has listened to this part two series on growing up in God, Lord God, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to continue to guide them, to lead them into all truth. Father God, I thank you that they made the decision to accept you as their Lord and Savior. It is the best decision that they could ever make in their life. Now, God, I ask that you cover the seed of your word in their heart. Lord, everything that they have just said, every note that they took, Every scripture that they wrote down, God, I ask that you let them hide it in their heart so they will not sin against you. 
Father God, I thank you. I ask that you go with them and be with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all, and I will see you on the next video.